You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 21st, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where our P.O. Box is back open for business, baby. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Apologize to our listeners if I sound a little fragile right now. Yeah. Uh, it has been a rough day. It has. Personally. Yes. For us. Yes. Um, you want it to tell has. them the story so I can sure. uh, breathe a little bit and just hear you, you talk about it? Because we're, we're okay. We're okay. There's no physical problem here. This is yes. our 499th episode. We're sliding into 500 next week. It's raining here. That's about the only, you know, scary thing physically happening. But we found out from one of our listeners uh, who had an envelope returned to her address, the unknown, that our P.O. box had been closed and has been closed for several weeks. Uh, we, we all thought you just didn't love us anymore. <laughs> but it, we but thought... it turned out. Go ahead. No, it just turned out that uh, the good people at Visa had screwed up. Uh, there's a long backstory about my wife having to change credit cards because of a little identity problem and someone stealing. Mm-hmm. Uh Got all that straightened out, but the people at Visa uh, put in the wrong amount in the transaction where we paid the proper amount for our six months, every six months, going back years now. They mm-hmm. put in zeros. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the post office recorded a zero amount being paid for the post office box and said, okay, well, I guess you don't want it anymore and closed it for us. And uh, yesterday, um, I was, you know, called them this morning. We found out about it yesterday. Uh, because there's no, you know, there's no red flag. They don't put a big sticker on the front of your box and the keys still work. So it's like, this, this is weird. Um, called him this morning and said, yeah, that, that closed out several weeks ago. So uh, the good people at the postal union, the Springfield Post Office Postal Union, helped us right out. Um, didn't charge us a carrying fee or, or, or whatever it is you do to that sort of thing. They realized this was not our mistake. This is just some credit card company botched some little transaction and they opened it back up for us. And so we are back, baby. We're back. Uh, we did not we did not go out of business. There's nothing wrong here. I did ask the person, I'm gonna do a little plug now. I asked him if we could add a business name to our P.O. box without difficulty, because we are gonna start Science Fiction University as a separate entity. Because I need a prob- third job, people. Right. Well, fifth job, really. Fifth, <laughs> fifth or sixth job, job at this point. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but uh, that's that's the tale of it. And that that hurt. That was like finding Amazon had um, shut us down right. when that happened. Uh, except this time, there, there was no like red flare going off saying something is wrong. Well, someone uh, sent just, me an email, but I get 800 emails a day. So yeah, yeah. that's, you know, seriously, I get from just my crooks and liars work, I get several hundred emails a day. Yeah. And, and we weren't expecting, we weren't expecting, I mean, my, a my wife right. has a little note from the post office. This is more than you probably want to hear. Uh, the actual original note from the post office saying, you know, pay your bill uh, with a circle on it and purple ink and, and the amount written in, the date written in. And so it's I, like, okay, I that's keep done records now. records of what I do. And so mm-hmm. then I was able to call Visa this morning and say, I, on this date, charged this amount. Do you have a transaction number for me? And they said, mm-hmm. oh, yes, we have a transaction for USPS in zero dollars and zero cents. Yeah. So we weren't looking for yeah. uh, a red flare to go off, right. so it just it just got right past us. Right, uh, but we're we're nothing happened except that I cried all morning. <laughs> yeah, well, that was it's just a it's just a real bad day for this to happen any day. But this was like especially yeah, well, bad and it, timing. It's first world problems. You know, there are yep. children lying on a cement floor during dust storms that yes. our government thinks is okay to be in a for profit yep. prison. Asylum Without seekers. About toothbrushes or soap. Yep. 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 And so, but but I want to talk about that for a minute, if you don't mind, Rick Glass. Oh, I want to, I'm stepping right out of the way, Blue Gal. I want to talk about how uh, we are given adages and, you know, things to tell ourselves. The, the stories that we tell ourselves and the statements that we make in our own heads or that our betters or elders tell us uh, mm-hmm. 
count your blessings. Uh, this is a first world problem. All the truisms, right? All those truisms, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know this. This could be worse. Uh, this too shall pass. The you know, there's che- all the check these is in the mail. Things. You know, the check is in the mail. <laughs> I wasn't thinking quite that one, but, um, and sometimes statements like that are well-meaning and healing and actually help you gain perspective. Sometimes those exact same statements are pernicious Mm -hmm. and are meant to keep you from questioning where you are and why, how you got there and why it is so. Yes. And I've been thinking a lot about that every time I hear on, CNBC or from the White House or from some Republican, the economy is doing great. Yeah. And I'm doing, you know, you and I are piecing together three or four or five different jobs, and we're not the only ones. No. We are, you know, in the majority in America, mm-hmm. people who are trying to piece together enough money every month to pay their bills. Right. And, you know, you and I live in a house that is worth under one hundred twenty-five thousand mm-hmm. dollars <laughs> in the middle of a cornfield, mm-hmm. we're paying you know paying what a third of our income in mortgage, yeah. Yeah. and uh, we have five jobs to do it, mm-hmm. and this podcast is one of them. Mm-hmm. And what what happened today was through no fault of your own, you're not going to get your part of your paycheck right. this month, mm-hmm. and that's really it. And and it. We have, I mean, I hate to throw a bunch of numbers out, but, you know, we have seven or 8,000 listeners for whom each and every one of you is absolutely precious to us. Mm -hmm. We have 70 people who support us. Yep, that's about right. Every month. Mm -hmm. 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. We're not making up that number. No. I have had to deal as a writer at Crooks and Liars multiple times a week. I have to check to make sure that what I'm referencing when I write for crooks and liars isn't behind a paywall. Yes. Because the internet is closing to free content. It It just, people cannot afford to do all of this work and provide content on the internet and not get paid for it. And I, water can only run downhill for so long. Yeah. And then eventually it's like, no, actually we're we have to start charging and you know we see this in our local newspaper, local television. Mm-hmm. They just it's mm-hmm. stripped for parts. They cannot afford right. to stay open. But yeah, no, this is true across the board. E- everybody who's trying just to make a living, everyone's trying to put it behind Patreon or trying to put it somewhere where they can eke out some income. Right, and and that is just not my gut. That my gut does not want to do that. Right. Uh, I've always blogged for free. I haven't put ads on my blog. And, you know, we've we've done a little thing with Amazon that worked out really well for us for a while, and then it didn't. Uh, but we just really want this model to work. Right. <laughs> and it's... I just don't know if, I don't know if it's going to continue to work. We, I, I feel the love. We get so many emails and so we many do. We do. kind messages on Twitter today. Maybe, you know, I maybe just... even too much email, Blue Gal. Maybe we get too much love because... <laughs> In, in well, full living that love, it's a little, little note from the post office saying, hey, hey. But you know, the thing is, I've set that up yep. so that yep. if it's coming to Pro Left Podcast, then it gets a little note that says podcast correspondence on it, and yep. I see it. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't bother me. You know, and so on a lot of the, I could do a lot to call down all of the spam that I get. You know, and mm-hmm. we, we all get too much email. But anyway. Uh, we are grateful to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this also is just always a kick to my gut from the standpoint of the struggle I have intellectually and with the amount of ADHD that's in my family. <laughs> yeah, and I know. Trying to, that's so true. Trying to pull through and really keep on top of the taxes and the podcast and the finances and the kids and their needs and i automate as much as i can and i i have a lot of technical skills Mm -hmm. and then something like this happens and it's one email i'm one email away from losing a percentage of my paycheck for this month right because the p.o box closed and and just i work with a lot of local uh especially independent businesses but a lot of local Mm -hmm. businesses Mm-hmm. Um, entrepreneurs who've opened uh, a, a brewery or a coffee shop or a restaurant or something, um, who are wonderful people, but 
this is not unique to podcasting. Right. This right. is this is what it is to open a small business. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, there's a very successful I consider it to be a very successful coffee shop uh, in the area run by wonderful people. They give away free coffee at events. They're always on tap for to volunteer. They have kids, young kids. But you know, I'm talking with the owner, and she's telling me that maybe one of these days she's going to be able to pay herself. Yeah, because right. everything is equipment and setup and licensing and on and, and taxes. on. And then of course she and wants taxes, to be, right. and taxes. And then of course she wants to stay involved in her community. So she's always being tapped for this or that because she's one of those people that is a doer, goes out and does stuff. Mm -hmm. Like very mm -hmm. much like my wife. She's one of those people who just says, Okay, well, there's a march, I'll be there. That you need knitting done, I'll be there. So but None of these people who are sort of holding on, bootstrapping their way, hoping that some point this becomes sustainable, right. count as being unemployed. Right. No, that's um, the point. We right. are we are not on we're not showing up in the roles. And there are millions of us who don't show up in the unemployment roles anywhere because we have a job with you know, pulling a paycheck, we have our own company. Well, we're not we're not applying for unemployment. Right. And that's what that number measures, yeah. right? Yeah. And Republicans were quick to measure that when it's a Republican yes. president <laughs> to measure unemployment as being low. Yeah. And then when there's a Democratic president to look at labor force participation and yeah. underemployment and so forth and so on. And statistics are what they are. Or but, just lie uh, about it. I mean, I remember during the, you know, when the economy started to turn around under Obama, yeah. uh, the head of GE was saying that he cooked the books. He's just making numbers up. Whenever the numbers look good under a Democrat um, it's because the Department of Labor is lying. And and I know that yeah. I'm lying because I'm a billionaire. I'm a right-wing lunatic. And, and my tummy feels like the black guy must be lying because things can't ever get better under a Democrat. It so, was Jack Welch. Jack, yeah, Welch, Jack Welch. That's that. right. It was Jack yeah. Welch. Yeah. And so Jack Welch uh, just spouts off that, ah, he's lying. Just making shit up. This, things are getting worse. They're terrible. And again, nobody grabbed him, you know, hauled his, his crazy ass off stage and told him to shut up. He was allowed to be out there along with Donald Trump. Uh, who, you know, this week, very publicly, uh, <laughs> the Huffington Post published all the tweets from Donald Trump from the Obama era. Yeah. Obama's going to start a war in Iran to save his election. Who is poll numbers down? I'm sure he's going to bomb Iran. And all the meatheads in your family, all the Republican friends you have, have no memory of that, have no recollection. So uh, keep that in your back pocket as well. Um, just This is by way of saying, we realize times are tough all over. Mm -hmm. We're just letting you know that we didn't go out of business. Our post office box is open. We made a mistake um, or Visa made a mistake rather. And it cost us. And it's that easy to get creamed. Yeah. You know, everyone is one mistake or two mistake, just like with healthcare. You know, if you're one broken leg away from financial ruin, you're one, you're one disease away from losing your home. Right. That is no way for the greatest country in the world to live. And two items came across the transom on Twitter in the past 24 hours. One was $11 billion plus dollars in profit for Amazon, and they're paying zero in taxes on that profit. Yeah. They paid exactly much in taxes as we paid for the post office box. <laughs> zero dollars and zero cents, yes. They got in trouble. They made $11 billion. They I'm made $11 saying... billion. Dollars. <laughs> and then uh, the cast of Friends, you know yeah. the TV show Friends? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's still alive and well. Still gets $20 million a year each in residuals Yeah, for that Good show. Money. Medicare for all. How are we going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. I don't begrudge the cast of Friends no. a nickel of that nope. at all. Uh, I don't believe in punishing people who have succeeded No, at absolutely. All. I and, do believe and in we're raising... also broke. We're sitting at home watching Friends instead of... <laughs> Right. instead of going out so but, but raising the marginal tax rate especially on wealthy people to pay for the expenses of keeping your country healthy and moving forward right. is not punishing them nope, they not. are wealthy because they live here and because we have a system that lets them grow their wealth right. and if you'd like to keep that going then you have to pay for it yeah. and that means roads and bridges and health and schools and clean air and clean water and and the idea that Taking money away from people via the government to pay for those things is somehow illegitimate. Or socialism. Or, or yes. slavery. Or socialism is, fuck you. Fuck you. No, if that's your belief, then we have nothing to talk about. And it, by the way, if there's a checklist we get to go through now about stuff I don't want to pay for, because you don't want to pay for this, you don't want to pay for that, I don't want to pay for those people, great. I would like the money right. back from the Iraq right. war, please. And all the military spending I don't approve of, and all the... 
loss revenue thanks to tax cuts for billionaires that never came through, that the Laffer curve never kicked in. All that money, I would like that back now. Except we never, as as we never charged that. the taxpayer not, for that. We borrowed that money. No, we don't. So yeah. if yeah. I, I want to pay for Medicare for all with the same type of plan yes. that we used to pay for the Iraq war, which is me- deficits, who cares? You know, the, the Mick Mulvaney, nobody cares about deficits. Dick Cheney, nobody cares about deficits. Ronald Reagan taught us deficits don't matter. Yeah. Rule book. I want that rule book for healthcare and housing and education for everyone in this country. And I want every Democratic candidate, <laughs> even even Elizabeth Warren, who has a plan for everything. Yep. And even Bernie Sanders, who has an inspiration and something of a plan for everything. I don't want to say anything bad about anybody right now, but I would like every Democratic candidate running for president, the minute they're asked, how are you going to pay for that, is to say, you know what? As Vice President Dick Cheney said, Reagan taught us Mm -hmm. deficits don't matter. And there was no riot in the streets. There was no Tea Party out in the streets. There was no, there was no, the Republican Party didn't drag him out of office. He wasn't impeached. They just said, yeah, well, there's a Republican in the White House, so fuck deficits. So we're going to abide by the same rules. We're going to hold the Republicans to the same rules that they created for themselves. Once Republicans start getting serious about paying for things, then we will all have a different conversation. But as long as these deadbeat fascist assholes are what they are, and that's going to happen until the last of them shuffles off to an early grave, um, then we're just not going to worry about that because that's not a conversation that that – any responsible adult is having other than people in the democratic party. So fuck those guys. <laughs> is what I say. Um, now uh, there's a lot of different ways we can go on this pod. By the way, I, this is our 499th podcast. It is. I just want to mention that um, we are closing in on yeah. 500, which is kind of cool. It's kind of vertiginous. I feel a little <laughs> bit dizzy. Um, it's like yesterday I woke up and we we're going to go with Iran and today we're not. I don't know what to make of that. It's very confusing. It makes There's me dizzy. There's a lot of thunder out there right now. If you're hearing anything there in is. the background, that's what we're dealing with. Uh, there is. Let's go ahead and, and go down the list of talking about stuff that you have put in our notes. And I have the talking about stuff. This is our spontaneous yeah. portion of the podcast. Right. We both have down everything in a Google Doc. Very rigidly. <laughs> That is that is not we and this over talking this Robert Altman thing that's all scripted, <laughs> all of it, every word of it. That's where all the money goes, people, to the scripting well, of this podcast. Drift class does a very good job on our on our notes. That's his job is to do the notes, and uh, then I do the yeah. post production, and I delete everything he right, says, as you know. We're, yeah, we're half yeah, of them disappear right. into the. But into the uh, you know, that's really but hey hey that's our premium <laughs> content right there, Blue Girl. You are I you're should, sitting on a goddamn gold mine there, Blue Girl. I should save all the stuff I delete of your saying <laughs> blah blah blah, yeah. and just paste it together. Yeah, the David Brooks and podcast. Put it up at Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> the outtakes. <laughs> Thank you for making me laugh on a very hard day, Drift Class. I lo- you are Whoa. so good to me, and I love you so much. And it it just, my emotional state is something that you have to deal with more often than you should. But you're very good at it. We live in troubled and perilous times, yeah. Blue Gal. And you're good at it. You're good and at, we, at and we never cope, helping me cope. And coping with you. Well, we never break our one rule, our one house rule. No, our one household rule is only one of us can be despondent at a time, right? It's just a rule. <laughs> All of people. Um, so, yeah, this was the week we almost went to war with Iran. Iran is such a beautiful country, mm-hmm. uh, just physically beautiful. The, the film I've seen of it is just mm-hmm. the landscape and the people. Uh, you know, there's just a beautiful. I can't say they've got a crazy government when I look at what we've got right now, yeah. right? No one, we can't point fingers at anyone uh, except maybe Saudi Arabia yeah, um, and Britain. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Andy, yeah. but Andy would agree with yeah. us on that one. Well, and, and, this is, and this is a case of John Bolton has been wanting, has been waking up with a hard on to destroy yeah. Iran for 30 years. And he finally got into it. And much to our shock, because I guess Pam Geller was busy. They... <laughs> They, you know, Tammy Atlas, Tammy yeah. Atlas, who's a who's a genuine psychopath and a yeah. John Bolton acolyte and one of his dearest friends, uh, they put the worst, craziest, most pernicious, warmongering whore in a position of actual power, and he wants to go bomb the shit out National of the National Security Advisor, yeah. absolutely, and, yeah. And he got right up, he got he got the tip in, Blue Gal, he got that tip in, well, 
Well, and then, he's a blogger. Right. Of course, he's a blogger. This is where Let's, the injustice. There's the injustice. Luke. This is the thing. We're Pam, blogger. Pammy Atlas is a blogger, right? Who, when she when she was younger, used to you know get in a bikini and whine about how women in burkas were being oppressed. And look right. at me, I'm blogging in a bikini. And and we all used to in the back in the day, you know, in 2004, 2005. Pammy's blog was a place you went to laugh. Right. I mean, it was because she was she wanted war with Iran. Right. Uh, she was Israel do or die, but in a way that wasn't even realistic. No, I mean, Bibi, it, it made it was no Bibi sense. Netanyahu do or die. It was right, and Bibi of- Netanyahu do or die, and right. Bibi thought she was crazy. Right. You could tell from the photo. I mean, just whatever. Uh, <laughs> She was a joke, and she right. was a blogger, and thought John Bolton should be running our foreign policy. Well, right. now he is. she got her wish. Now, here's my question: Is because Chris Hayes said that you know that one of the solutions to this whole thing is first of all fire John Bolton. John Bolton gets fired and goes back on Fox News. Does he have the president's so-called president's ear? Sure, more. Does. There is no, there is no, <laughs> there is no line between Fox News and yeah. right wing hate radio in the White House. They're just yeah. it's, it's one yeah. entity, it's one organism. It's a self feeding, self fulfilling, self gratifying monster. And, and, so, and that is my only hope for this world right now is that the the racist hate mongers, the two big ones, Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram on their shows in the past two days have looked at the camera and said to Donald Trump, a war with Iran is going to ruin your reelection. Right. And that to me is what he was listening to. Plus probably if, if we give him credit, creating some sort of drama that he could talk to Chuck Todd about today. Yeah. Well, he has, uh, he has all the symptoms. I don't Mm -hmm. know what the symptoms are of fourth stage syphilis in the brain. (laughs) I mean, he has, he's gay. That's he, not he has, very nice. No, West, no, but, you it's know. not. I wasn't talking about Tucker Carlson. He has other problems. I'm talking about Donald <laughs> Trump, who's got a rotten brain. His brain is yeah. just physically yeah. rotting. It's rotting inside his skull. And he is a doddering, racist, old lunatic, just spouting shit off with actual power. Mm-hmm. And, and when you come right down to it, once you've sort of taken away all of his higher cognitive functions, which he doesn't have anymore, the only thing President Stupid knows how to do is to increase tension on camera before the commercial break. Right. That's literally all he knows. That that's, his, that's the only thing he's ever been good at. He sucked at real estate. He sucked at having a family. He sucked at cheating on his wife. He's, he's, he's been propped up by other people. He's really good at getting mobsters and thugs to give him money that he can then piss away. He's great at throwing lawyers at people to, making them, to make them shut up. He's really good at scamming idiots and racists. That's what he's good at. And all he knows how to do really is to make things tense just before the commercial break, because all he knows how to do is reality TV shit. Yeah. So Iran was going to get bombed until 10 minutes beforehand, but I was told people might actually die and viewers might cancel their subscription. Mm-hmm. And that cannot stand. I will not. And it's like, who the fuck do you, who, who are you talking to? There is nobody in the world who thinks that Donald Trump was actually briefed on any actual plan to lob explosives into Iran that didn't include a body count. Yeah, yeah. So he just made up some fucking reason to pull it out, pull it out at the last minute, because if he didn't pull it out, he has two choices. One, uh, he has to pay for its abortion. (laughs) Or two, he has to to dump his wife and marry Iran. Because it was the only options available to Donald Trump uh, when he leaves it in too long. So he doesn't want to do either of those. So he pulled out and, uh, and made a dramatic, you're exactly right, made a dramatic, a sound bite so that Chuck Todd can, you know, lay down on his lap and braid his hair and talk about big important things uh, because Chuck Todd is a waste of skin, man. This this last week, last Sunday proved anything. It's that Chuck Todd really is just as shitty as everyone thinks he is. Every now and then he gets up on a little, his hind legs, every now and then they loosen the leash just a little bit. And he gets up on his hind legs and starts complaining about how this whole false equivalence thing is terrible. It's just terrible. And then Phil Griffin just yanks his leash a little bit, and Chuck Todd gets back under the under the desk where he's where he belongs. And then you bring out someone like Steve Scalise on Sunday, yeah, who just lied and lied and lied, lied and lied and lied. And Chuck Todd's response was, "Let's move on to some other topic." Yeah, because he's a footstool. He's a human footstool. He, you know, this is this is where Republicans go 
on Beltway, on mainstream television to wipe their ass. And they've been doing that since we For, are in our, our adult life. Yes. I mean, this is, this was Dick Cheney's favorite program. Yeah. yeah. And I think you republished this week, didn't you? Tim Russert was no Tim big, Russert, was no, yeah. was no great shakes. And people are saying, well, yeah, but compared to, I don't want to compare to, I'm no. horrified that we've lowered the bar to the point where people go, you know what? David Gregory was great. We don't want to speak ill of the dead. That's no. not my goal. It's not no. my goal to speak ill of the dead. But people who, who get mad at Chuck Todd and then say, if only Tim Russert would come back. Yeah. Tim Russert was Dick Cheney's favorite interview. He right. loved going on Tim Russert because he could lie. Right. And Tim Russert would make Dick Cheney's lies look reasonable and measured. Right. And and please do not rewrite history and pretend right. again. There's no need for anyone to speak ill of the dead. He's nope. gone, and that was a tragedy, and we're sorry that he died. Mm -hmm. uh, but please don't allow his death to mean you put him on a pedestal that he never deserved. And please, let's, yeah. let's also not forget that there was this interim period between Tim Russert and Chuck Todd called the age of David Gregory. <laughs> David and David Gregory. Gregory was horrible. He was <laughs> fucking awful. He was, I mean, David Gregory was my bread and butter. Not that I made a lot of bread and butter. I used to write Sunday morning coming down, just reviews of the Sunday shows. I started doing that way back before they were anything, before they were popular. I used to get up physically at the condo in Chicago and do this every goddamn Sunday until it got this to the point before where, you met me. Yeah. No, this is going back to the, 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 the age of blogging blue gal for yeah. YouTube before I had cable television before Seriously. I owned phone. and Seriously. I used to do that. And I've gotten out of the habit because it, a it does do no good. And B it's all reruns. It's all mm -hmm. reruns. Everything I wrote in 2004, five, six, seven, everything I wrote about David Gregory is true with a vengeance for Chuck Todd. And that means to me, that the problem is not Chuck Todd. The problem was not David Gregory. The problem are Andy Lack and Phil Griffin, the people who run the fucking network. Comcast mm -hmm. runs the mm -hmm. fucking network. They mm -hmm. want Republican footstools sitting in those chairs, kissing Republican ass, letting them get away with murder for whatever fucked up reason. That's who they want there. There are a yeah. billion people to choose from. They choose, choose these two idiots. And when Chuck Todd goes, they'll bring in somebody else who's just as bad or worse. That Because the problem is the system. Not those individuals. Those individuals deserve nothing but contempt because they're willing to take a paycheck and sit there and nod and grease up Republican balls all week long for money. And that's just the lowest kind of debasing of your profession. But they're a symptom of the problem. They're not the problem. Like Trump. Trump is not the problem. Trump is the symptom of the problem. The problem is the Republican Party. Do what At what po point or in what fashion do you think that the problem with Chuck Todd is human nature and be just simply the act of being in Washington, D.C. and having your job be to cover people in power becomes so intoxicating. You know, the bell jar of farts <laughs> mm -hmm. just spaces you out to the point where you know you have to. I'm, what I'm trying to get to is the whole Joe Biden thing. Is it nature uh, or nurture? We have to work no. with these people. We all have to work together. We all have to be this kind of homogenized harmonious blended kind of thing right and if you've been in washington for 40 years like joe biden mm -hmm. and you know all these people and have had drinks with them and you know next year it'll be another issue this year it might be green new deal but next mm -hmm. year it'll be something else and we all just have to compromise our way through and and work together well if if you're Chuck Todd and you're in those circles all day long in the White House, walking in, driving into the White House, and there's a gate there that you're allowed through, right? Uh, and now Politico is holding a going away party for Hera Huckabee Sanders. Yes. <laughs> so I was asking you about Washington D.C. being the intoxicating atmosphere of hu is it yeah. human nature, or is there something worse going on? Well, I, it's it's it reminds me of you know when you put whole milk next to an onion in the refrigerator, <laughs> you know eventually that milk's going to smell like that onion. Yeah, and you know there are people who get out in the field and talk to people, and I understand groupthink. I understand I've been you know part of enough organizations 
where it was, what do you think? What do you think? I don't know what you did. Sort of consensus amoeba. I get that. What bothers me immensely, and, and this is this is what broke our country, honestly, is they started telling themselves fairy tales mm -hmm. about the country mm -hmm. based on the Republicans they knew, the Republicans who were across the fence. They started listening to David fucking Brooks. Mm -hmm. And they, they gave him a job and he was their whisperer. He, they, they had a handful of people who, who said they knew what was going on inside the GOP. Don't worry. It's a bunch of Edmund Burke quoting, you know, serious, sober minded patriots uh, who just sit around thinking about Bill Buckley all day <laughs> and, and love America and just care about fiscal prudence. And, and you know, like Paul Ryan is one of them, a thoughtful man, Paul Ryan. And this is the story they told themselves. Yeah. And the story that this small group of incredibly powerful, incredibly rich, inbred people told themselves turned out to be completely wrong, completely wrong. And at no point in that period when they were lying to themselves, they still are, frankly, um, did anyone bother to check? I've used the analogy before Prince Prospero from Edgar Allan Poe's um, Mask of the uh, Red the, Death. The, uh, yeah. Mask of the Red Death. Yeah. Where they just walled themselves off, and they just they just put a big wall of money and privilege and and control of the media. That's really important. They control the camera. Uh, Ta Nehisi Coates was being interviewed on radio. I was listening to it the other day. He was talking about the the fact that his article, uh, someone was mentioning that his article was the one that really got the whole ball rolling, right on uh, on reparations. And he was very clear. He said mm -hmm. that it's because it was in the Atlantic. He said. A lot of people are about a, a, write about a lot of things a lot of the time and nobody listens to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said that's not fair at all, but that's the way it is. The reason this this worked is because it was in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. And the Atlantic is read by certain people right. with a lot of power. And therefore, that moved the conversation forward. The, the people who control the newspaper and the op-ed page especially and control cable news um, wanted a certain America to be true. And they lied and lied and lied and lied to themselves about that being true, even though it was becoming self-evidently obvious that nothing that they believed about America was right, especially about the Republican Party. Yeah. What they kept telling themselves about the Republican Party was clearly not true. But David Brooks would come skulking in every few weeks and talk about, you know, don't worry. Yeah, it's, it's 2014. And yeah, we had that little Sarah Palin problem, but everything's fine now. Mm -hmm. And they'd keep listening to him. And they yeah. didn't listen to him because he was right or fair or honest or honorable. David Brooks is none of those things. He's a liar. But he's a liar who tells incredibly powerful mm -hmm. people the lies they want to believe. And when you have enough money, you can just keep paying people to lie to you. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world. It doesn't matter what's happening in politics. And so the story keeps changing about what really happened and who was really to blame. And is it both sides? It's all sides. And, oh, my gosh, it's Trump. Before Trump, everything was fine. But they're all the same fucking story, which is it wasn't our fault. Yep. It's both sides. It's always both sides. And that's what that's where they fail because in I've worked in insurance, I've worked in government, I've worked at colleges, and there's group thinking all organizations. The the institution these fuckers represent is supposed to be the media. Yep. They're the ones who are protected by the First Amendment and they're charged with the responsibility of telling us what the hell is going on. And they abdicated that responsibility years ago, back when Sally Quinn was talking about the Clintons coming to this town and wrecking this town. This is our town. She was talking about the village. Yep. Yep. The little village in Washington, D.C., where everyone knew each other and everybody knew the Kennedys and they all were back scratching each other and they all got along fine. And the Clintons came and ruined everything with their hillbilly ways, you know? Yeah. And, and the, it's this, and unless that machine is broken, I mean, really broken right down to the waterline. They're going to keep lying to each other. They're just going to keep lying. They're, going, they're, they're the Roman Empire at the at the, you know, at its most decadent, where the 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 frontiers are collapsing and the barbarians are coming, and they won't fucking listen because it doesn't personally affect them. Mm -hmm. And so they keep paying storytellers. Right. The reason I subtitled our podcast this week in my notes: um, Never Trumpers are America's post-revolution Russian aristocracy. Mm -hmm. And I also mean the centrists and the pundits and the David Brookses and the Chuck Todds and the Michael Gersons and all the rest of these scum who've been lying about the Republican Party for years. So it turns out after lying and lying and lying and lying about the Republican Party, about who's really in charge, what they really want, and they're not really racist, turns out they're all wrong. They're all fucking wrong, horribly wrong. 
That's what Trump, the election of Donald Trump proved. These people have, have absolute got it completely wrong for years and they had the resources to do it right. So they did it on purpose. There's no other explanation for it. But now these people are wandering around like, like Russian aristocracy after the revolution. They're dispossessed. They got kicked out of their own fucking right. country. But they're still incredibly wealthy. They're never going to miss a meal. <laughs> they're, they're, well, they're never going to miss a meal, but they're wealthy and they're fucking arrogant. Yeah. They're, they're, they're emigres to our country and they're walking around telling us how to run our politics. Yeah, here's what the Democrats should do. You know, you, you really shouldn't be going after Biden so hard. Here's the problem with socialism, blue gal. Shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. You had a country. It was called the Republican Party. You fucked it up. You were so interested in your privilege and telling and circle jerking and telling each other the same goddamn lie over and over again. You never noticed the peasants that you created and that you motivated to win elections for you right. were coming for you with torches. And we tried to warn you and tried to warn you and tried to warn you. You told us all to sit down and shut up. Well, now that the, the peasants and the monsters and the, the ghouls and the beasts that you created have taken over your party, just like we warned you. And now you come to our party and have the fucking temerity to lecture us on how best we can clean up your goddamn mess. Well, and they want to sit at the table and eat off of our China. And, of course, because and you know we're going to have compromise and work together with a saner president, and the right. and the fever will break. How many years did Barack Obama wait for the Republican All of fever them. to break? All of them. <laughs> he waited for eight years, never yep. broke. Yep. And so you know what? Here's my advice to our our emigres, the never Trump emigres, the centrists, the Chuck Todds. They're now guests in our democratic country. Learn the fucking language. Learn the language of the Democratic Party. Shut up about deficits. Shut up about both sides. Shut up about it's not left or right. It's right or wrong. It's about patriotism. Stop talking to us about the American people because you clearly don't know a good goddamn thing about the American people or the country in which you live. Learn our language, dumbass. Yep. Learn our customs. If you'd like to stay, if you'd like to be anything other than a, a despised, <laughs> dying appendix to the american system then you will learn what we have to teach you and you'll start acknowledging that we were the ones who told you this was going to happen okay but i'm gonna stop you there drift because do. i yeah, think i, I think uh Made my point. i think we are not you and i i'm talking about you and i and people of right. our generation yes. and older are not the people who are going to decide how the table is set anymore no 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 and people who are of my age who listen to Drift Glass think he's being quite vicious and quite unforgiving. Uh huh. I am. It is nothing compared to people of middle child's generation, right? And junior dude's generation yeah. who absolutely will have not only reject the message, mm -hmm. but reject the medium right. <laughs> of, of the people like Tom Nichols and Chuck Todd right. and David Brooks. And so, like, those dinosaurs no. are not even part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. When we get to the point of people who went to school in with every single friend of yours is mixed race, you have five gay people among your circle of friends, mm -hmm. and you know abortion is just two pills. Right. You know it's not it's not something that. Uh, is surgical and it's not something that's anybody's business but your own. Mm -hmm. And uh, frankly, we're gonna we are gonna get to the point in the next twenty years where abortion by mail is how it's gonna be done, mm -hmm. uh, because women just don't have time <laughs> for the guilt or the anguish of an unplanned pregnancy. It's just not anything that's going to matter uh, because of because of five jobs, drift class. Right. Because we're still going to be in that point of yeah. economic disruption mm -hmm. where people have to scrape by to make a living. Right. And we're, it, that's going to take a lot longer. I don't know how, you know, I pray every day for my kids to find a way to solve climate change, to f solve this disruption where, you know, it's technology, not factories that right. are feeding the economy. Right. And it, it, it's just hard to know what the future is going to bring. And it's a little scary. It is. But I'm not scared. What I'm not scared about is the politics no. of my children's generation. No. Because regardless of whether they have Republican parents or not, their experience has been 
such that their acceptance of people who are different than they are is so far and way above what mine is. Mm -hmm. Not not David Brooks. No. You know, David Brooks is Rush Limbaugh. I never heard of the guy. I don't know what he says. I don't know about that. That's not my party. You mm -hmm. know, no, these kids are far and away beyond where I am. Yeah. So, yeah, no, this, this is, um, this, I, mean, I don't think it's up to us to, we're not going to be the ones that pick the China pattern at no. the table either. <laughs> but we do have a few more battles to fight. Yes, we do. And one of the battles that, uh, that is going on right now is the dead old um, uh, establishment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hanging on to power by hanging on to its lies yeah. and hanging on to the biggest megaphone in town yeah. to keep preaching that lies to that lie to people who actually have real power. Yeah. yeah. You know, if, if, if you want to fuck up an election, <clears throat> spend two years uh, telling the entire public through the biggest megaphone in the world that there's no difference between the two political parties. Yeah. They're both wrong. They're both bad. They're both sinister. They're both evil because you want to place the table after that election is over and when Hillary Clinton is president yeah. to be able to say, I was tough. I was a, I was a badass. I held her to account. And that was what happened. Yep. You had the entire me uh, established media from, from Comey on down to Ron Fournier yep. lining up to kick Hillary Clinton in the head because she was obviously going to win and they wanted to look tough and fair and like real journalists and real people. Once she won, they could, they have their credentials. Mm -hmm. well, we, I was tough on her. I held her to account. And then what turned out that the abuse they heaped on her was just enough to let Trump win. They they all scrambled like roaches in the light, looking for someone else to blame for what happened. Mm -hmm. Has to be someone else's fault, someone else's problem. Certainly wasn't us. Those people have got to go. Yeah. Yeah. They have got to because if they're not held accountable, Beluga, because we've been through this movie before. We've been through this before during the Bush administration. We were, we went through it during the Clinton administration. We went through it during the fucking Tea Party years. The same people over and over again fuck up the same country over and over again and get away with it because the media will not hold them accountable, will not name names within their own organization or outside of it, and will not point the camera at Bill Crystal and say, why is this fucking warmonger on my television? Yeah. Why is this asshole got a camera? In his, why is this person being given any credibility at all? Well, and the reason is they're all paid by the same people. And I think, I think that's where uh, we do have work to do. And one of the things that we can do to lay the groundwork for mm -hmm. younger generations to have an easier path to progress is ending corruption. Yeah. If, yeah. if we can yes. get enough power for 15 months and spend that precious time increasing ballot access, mm -hmm. eliminating Citizens United, uh, toughening up FCC regulations and have an attorney general who really cares about race and racial equality mm -hmm. will go a long way toward helping that future generation make progress for themselves. And yeah. I add one more thing to your Christmas list, which yeah, is I yeah. would like an administration that can't be freaked out uh, by, by James, uh, what's his name? Every time a fake James video comes yeah. up. Yeah. James O'Keefe. I'd like an administration that isn't so terrified of their own shadow. Yeah. That every time some asshole on the right says, boo, well, I guess we're gonna have to fire Van Jones. Yeah. yeah. Um, because no, no, no. I want them to I want them to swing as hard or harder back at the people doing that. I want genuine corruption brought under control. I want genuine accountability. But the right has no business pretending to hold anybody accountable for any of it. They are a criminal class. Mm -hmm. They have no credibility. They are not invited to any conversation about anything from now on. Um, and I, I will not, as far as my little platforms allow me, I will not allow my party to let them in the door and let them dictate terms because that's, those days are over but, now. Drew Class, this failed. is what scares me is that Donald Trump is such a master at television and cable TV that sure. uh, what, what for him is a one day scandal, you know, him not apologizing to the Central Park Five was, both sides five minutes, five both minutes sides. scandal, five second scandal, and then uh -huh. you know if Kamala Harris says something or or Elizabeth Warren says something or Joe Biden says something, that's a four day story. If something right. somebody misspeaks, that's a four day story, and mm -hmm. it's just because the fire hose of outrage at Trump is so fast and you can't keep up mm -hmm. that there is an imbalance. There really is an imbalance it's there. Great. Um, well, but on the other hand, 
he may be a master at dropping in or he just, he's really good at throwing cinder blocks into traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we have a podcast, Blue Gal. So, you know, <laughs> and uh, our podcast ain't going anywhere. Donald Trump is term limited. We're yeah, not. That's right. Um, Donald Trump's going to be gone by the next election cycle one way or the other. And we will still yeah. be here and we will still be here, you know, pushing a broom, uh, you know, chopping wood and carrying water, no matter what happens. Chopping wood and carrying water. That's right. Because that's our lot. But we're in this, if you haven't figured this out, we're in this for the long yeah. haul. We didn't set this podcast up to, you know, scam you people into <laughs> into supporting us and then blow town once the weather changes. We've been doing this since the Obama right. administration. We're gonna we did this doing before this. Citizens We've United. We did this before Instagram. We did this before. You were blogging. You and I were blogging before YouTube. We were, yes, we were. That's not that's not why we were. <laughs> and so we, we really, really were. were. I, I remember uh I, I always bring this up, but I remember the day I realized Barack Obama was going to be the Democratic nominee was he had mm-hmm. embeddable video of his speech oh at Selma Dude. that worked. Uh-huh. And then the embed code for a blogger worked. And we didn't have YouTube embeds ever at that point. Oh my God. It was so great. Yeah, I do feel bad that last week I said there were two subjects that David Brooks should never touch again. Mm-hmm. I was wrong. Marriage in Iraq, I was wrong. There are actually three subjects that David Brooks should never touch again. What's the third one? Marriage, Iraq, and moral formation among the elite. Uh, this is the week that David Brooks, because as you were saying, um, uh, our kids' generation, yeah. to them, the Republican Party is already dead. Right. Right. You know, the future looks very liberal slash progressive slash socialist. Uh, they're just not going to put up with it. And they're, they're going to really resent people uh, hoarding 90 percent of the wealth of this country and pissing on them. And they're just not going to put up with right. it. Right. Um, so which leaves a challenge for uh, conservatives, because there's who the fuck wants to be a conservative? I know that David Brooks writes a column every 18 months about hey, the, the, the corners being turned and the, the, it's exciting to be a conservative. Mm. It's a great day. <laughs> In March of 2016, you wrote a column about what a great, glorious coming home to Jesus Day it was going to be after Trump, because then the whole future of conservatism is wide open. And what a great thing it's going to be to watch the recreation of the Republican Party and to be a part of a new conservatism. And we're all going to wear coffee filters on our heads this time. Yeah. 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 Trump couldn't last. Trump was never going to win. That was never going to happen. And so now he has a problem because everything he's written his entire life is bullshit. But he still wants to to nurture some future conservative movement. And there's one person who he turned to uh, for sustenance, uh, Kyle Kushev, um, who is a Parkland student, uh, who's the uh, who's the conservative one. He's the one that typed the N word like 40 times in an email. Yeah. And yeah, it turns out he did a lot of racism stuff. Yeah, he wanted and, to kill all uh, the Jews and N word, N word, N word. And yeah, it was yeah. pretty bad. Uh, but but he's he's a uh, he's the gun rights guy. Yeah, he's the conservative guy. He is like the there's this little tiny tiny potted plant. There's one little plant left. It's like the plant of the apes, and they're walking and walking. And David Brooks is walking. There's a, a little green sprig. Oh my god! Here's the future of conservatism. This kid is going to save conservatism, and then it turns out nope, uh, that's not going to happen. Harvard says nope, nope, nope. See the things you do in high school actually affect whether or not you're offered college admissions. Who knew? So uh, they they withdrew their admission. They withdrew yeah. their offer. And a whole bunch of conservatives promptly flipped out. Uh, they, now, David Brooks was smart enough to say this isn't about free speech because it's not. But he said it's about moral formation. You see, here's the thing. And it's, it got into this whole thing about how it, the, maybe maybe it's a good thing. You bring him in and you, you teach this young man. And you shape him in the ways because it's like, holy shit, we're not going to have anybody – coming out of any legitimate institution in this country to carry on yeah. my legacy. Uh, except that wasn't really what the column was about. The column was about David Brooks because every David Brooks column is about David Brooks. So David Brooks's column was actually about, holy shit, what happens if people start holding conservatives accountable for the things they wrote? Oh my God, this is David Brooks' nightmare scenario. That one day someone might actually open the books on him and start holding him accountable for the shit that he wrote. And that would be the end of David Brooks. So in his moral panic, that's, this might start a trend in holding conservatives accountable for the things they said. He decided that this would be an, an ideal moment to get very pious 
and very pompous and very Christian and rub his hands together and say, this young man should be led into Harvard and shown the error of his ways. Because that's what Harvard is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's there to sort of baptize young conservatives into the ways of the world. And, and the worst case scenario for this kid is he becomes one of the billions of human beings on earth who aren't going to go to Harvard. Well, and, and for me, there's been a whole lot of people this week who have discovered that the internet has no private space. And I'm not going to get into yes. any of them, but it really is important to, for people to realize there is, you type something on a keyboard, it is not private anymore. You take a picture and put it on the web. You take it with a smart device it's not private, mm -hmm. and we could have stronger laws about that, and I think we should. I, anyone who blackmails someone mm -hmm. over nude photos is a blackmailer and should be treated as such. People who steal yeah. emails are thieves, yeah. and they should be treated as, stuff, as such. The law needs to catch up with the technology quickly, and of course, as long as mm -hmm. Republicans feel that it benefits them, that's not going to happen. Uh, but this Kyle Kashuv kid... Uh, had an IQ problem as well as a racism problem because typing N-word, 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 kill the Jews in a forum and then coming out, well, that was a private conversation <laughs> when we've all got screenshots of it is uh, is not right. It's it's not intelligent. And it happened two whole years before he was admitted, Blue Gal. So, <sighs> you know, oh, I'm sorry. Are, how? What's the deadline now? How far back do we well, not go? Yeah. If if you were if you, if they if Harvard or any other school found out that you were arrested at sixteen for shoplifting, right. they'd rescind your admission as well. Well, he might you have know, to go to Yale now, so you know that's the that's the tragedy of it all. Who cares? I know, I know. <laughs> exactly. This is this is he's a he's a he's a leader in Turning Point USA. Charlie Kirk's Harvard professor in a uh, tattling service that where they go and find out the real liberal agenda of college professors all over the country so he's always, he'll always have a job in wing nut welfare well, and, and that's always. and the point being this was a nothing story this was a nothing right. story except for the fact that conservatives decided to make it a hill to die on because yeah, yeah. a conservative was being kicked out of a bastion of higher education for mm -hmm. being a racist and yeah. they thought well, and, and so conservatism, as as Ten Grain said at his blog, mm -hmm. okay, conservatism equals racism. Then I'm glad to know yeah. that. You know, we're glad to hear yeah. that. Glad to hear it. Drift Glass, yeah. uh, we have a phone number that people can call and leave a voicemail. Now, here's the deal: I have tested this phone number. It's a Skype phone number, and it works. It goes to voicemail. You'll hear this. You'll either hear me or you'll hear the Skype lady. Uh, tell you to leave a voicemail. I'm going to try to change it to me today. I haven't tested retrieving these messages yet because I had quite a morning getting our PO box reopened mm -hmm. and crying about it. <laughs> so um, here is the number. It is, and I will put this at our Twitter page and our Facebook page yeah. as well. And it'll be on our um, on the posts that go up. Yeah, it is two one seven. Two eight zero four four nine six. That's two one seven two eight zero four four nine six. You can call and leave us a message. Uh, let us know your first name and where you're from and uh, whatever is on your mind. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to clip these and put them in uh, on our podcast for our five hundredth episode. That's right. And if That's not, what if we're looking for, uh, we will respond to them. Yeah, I I haven't quite figured out any of this yet, but right. I've got a number and it works, and that I <laughs> that much I know. I'm going to give it out. I'm going to take the risk and assume that we can master this technology. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Simon. Simon is shown in the photograph with former Internet Kitty Brewster. Simon recently moved in with Brewster, and the new roommates are getting along just fine in a very large bay window with a view of all the birds they know they could catch if it wasn't nap time. So busy. So busy. So busy. Schedule. Schedule, people. Brewster and Simon eat freshly poured cat food, the ever-popular fake sponsor of this podcast. Whether you buy Pet Store Perfection or Dollar Store Dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the cat food they eat is only freshly poured. 
Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. We've had suggestions for new versions of freshly poured, by the way. Mm -hmm. One listener wants us to come out with new can. (laughs) New can, because who eats food that's been out for five minutes? Indeed. No one. (laughs) No one does that. And another listener said top layer canned cat food, which is the same thing. We, they, it, we, the, a can where you open it up and it's only the top layer of the cat food that gets eaten. So you, you avoid waste that way, right? There's also, we're working on, uh, hey, you're in, the, you're in the kitchen anyway, cat food. <laughs> which is, I, I just walk out there. It might be midnight. It might be two in the morning. It might be eight o'clock. I'm getting coffee or something for making breakfast. And uh, I turn around, there's a grumpy old lady cat looking at me like, come on, man. Come on. Come on. You're in the kitchen anyway. You're here, I'm here. Let's do this thing, okay? <laughs> and uh, anyway, scientists are working yeah. right now. Old lady cats being, um, she loves drinking tub water, like the, the drip that's on the tub. She loves licking it dry. Mm-hmm. And the past two nights, she has sat outside the tub while I've been in the shower, meowing at yeah. me to get out. <laughs> and she'll come and tap me on the shoulder. Yeah. And basically like, come on. Tub's dry. Let's go. So run it <laughs> in there dry. And, and she'll, okay, look, that's it. That's all I wanted. You can go whatever we, you're doing We now. get up from whatever we're doing and go turn the tub on a little bit so that well, she she's has. she's 800 years old and she jumps in and out of that tub with the flexibility of a She's our Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We'll do whatever she says. <laughs> whatever you need. Whatever you need, little, little lady. She's you 18 this year sure. and she's, we've almost lost her a couple times. So. Yeah. She's very, very precious. She gets. She is the most spoiled cat in this house, though. She is. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you can visit Brewster and Simon at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses or call us, at 217-280-4496. We reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Thank you to the Postal Service for getting our P.O. Box reopened. Nothing but kind it and helpful. It was not their fault, and they waived the fee, and they the late fee, and they just you know parted the Red Sea for us and made it work today. And having cried all the way there... Um, <laughs> It really, it was nice to be taken care of as a cherished customer when we, when we got into the post office. So go postal unions. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. One of four jobs we do, four or five jobs we do. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Driftless, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties wish to thank the local postal union for making sure that future cat treat deliveries get through without delay. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.